again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit here on MAV TV. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Ashley Scrummy and Steve Bose zooming our way through 2020. And uh, Ashley, quite the uh, quite the collection there you have in the background. Where have you, well, where have you moved your moved your Zoom camera to? <laughs> well, I'm currently in my office at uh, the he Lethal Headquarters um, today. So uh, this is my front wall that I get to stare at every single day when I'm here. Nice, nice. Nothing better than a well-documented and dressed-up office. That is, uh, that is so neat. Ashley, we're at such a neat stage in the sport, and, it's, and, and I think we've talked about this. This is a step by step by step process and uh, a month ago we probably a month ago we had park jefferson that did a pay-per-view only event and then the world of outlaws came on with a pay-per-view their first race back this past weekend nascar came back with the first race back and uh it, it, while it's not what we're looking for and it's not what we want it has been fascinating to watch this step-by-step -step approach and it's a step in the right direction. You yes. know, I, we're getting there. Sure, we don't know the end game. We don't know the timetable on this, but at least we're getting there. How was it like to be back at the track? Oh, it, it, it was it was weird, okay? Pre, going in, all the pre-race stuff was so weird, okay? As soon as they said the command, it became normal. And during the racing, it was absolutely normal. We actually talked about that on MRN during the uh, during the races this past week at Darlington. So really, really neat. Great to be back at the racetrack, and uh, can't wait to do it again. That's for sure. So uh, hey, speaking of at the racetrack, check this out. Jackson Motorplex, our, fr our friends up in Jackson, Minnesota, they raced this past weekend the Great Lakes Shootout, and here is a battle between Donnie Schatz and Sheldon Audenshield. It is our Drydeen Diesel All Deftifying Move of the Week. And now for the Drydeen Deftifying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. He races for the lead out of turn number two, side by side down the back straightaway. Hot and Shield tests the outside of the speedway and turns three and four off of four. You've got a new leader in Sheldon Hot and Shield. Holy smokes! That Deftifying Move was brought to you by Drydeen Diesel All Def the official DEF of the World of Outlaws and Wheelmen Everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Pride. Passion. Performance. We are. We are. We are Team Dryden. Welcome back, Wing Nation, rolling along here on MAP TV, presented by Sage Troop. Joining us on the Hercules Tire Hotline is Sheldon Hodenshield. Sheldon, welcome into Wing Nation. How you doing, man? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. Well, it is great to have you there, Sheldon. We have all kinds of things I want to talk to you about, but I love our Zooming as we're doing because it shows us where you're at and where are you at. One of those helmets, tell us about Tell us about the background we have here. Uh, yeah, just uh, in my shop that we've been building. So uh, had a little time off here, so I got to uh, build some display shelves and, and just been working in the shop every day, so. Uh, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. You know, I've had all these helmets sitting around in my parents' house and uh, finally got to display them. Sheldon, give us a little bit of advice because obviously you built this shop pretty quickly. Um, you know, kind of all started breaking ground and, and now you're in there, things are fully furnished. A little bit of advice for somebody who's potentially looking to build a shop ourselves. What was probably the biggest headache you dealt with with all of that? Uh, man, I've been super fortunate. Uh, my cousin, uh, Little Jack, is a contractor, and, and he's kind of taken, taken care of me the whole time. I haven't had to worry about too much except for uh, supplying the money to him. So, um, you know, I've had lots of drawings uh, drawn up for the past couple of years, and, and I was just really ready when we went to build, and I think that was uh, probably the main factor in, in getting everything done so quickly is we had a really good game plan. So, uh when i was ready to build and, and closed on the land and, and got my loan for everything uh it was just uh full bore on 
on what we wanted to do and we knew exactly what we wanted to do. So, uh, and having a really good contractor like my cousin uh, definitely helped. I love it. Ashley Strummy, I am telling you what, they, see, they are getting ready to build a shop, her and her husband for their chassis business. So uh, the, the gist of that question was total selfishness. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell she, she, she could care less about it other than the details. So um, that is great. Uh, that is really, really cool. I want to go back to the helmet, Sheldon. Okay. Is there a, uh, are there specific types of helmets or guys or is it just a general collection? What is what is the 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 when you see a helmet that you want to collect? What what makes you want to collect it? I'm different than a lot of people. I don't, I don't collect anybody else's helmets. Uh, these are all just me and my dad's helmets. Uh, my dad's are on one side, mine are on the other. Um, I have a bunch of my grandfather's from both sides. Uh, my dad's dad John and my mom's dad Max and and my mom's uh, brother Mike so uh, just all family helmets uh, you know my dad sold uh, probably 10 helmets uh, back when I started racing just because we needed money to start racing and I look back on it now and think how stupid that was to get a couple thousand bucks for a helmet uh, but that just goes to show my dad was willing to do anything to get me on the track and and super grateful for it but uh, you know, if anybody out there has any of my dad's helmets, uh, I'd probably buy them back from him. Oh, that's freaking awesome. I mean, you look at it now and think that it's probably a dumb idea, but you might not be sitting in the, the seat that you're sitting in if you wouldn't have sold those helmets. So uh, cool stuff. And maybe you can get those helmets back. That would be absolutely incredible. Sheldon, is there one on that wall that really, you know, you're just really proud of or it's got a really great story or it just it really means a lot to you? Man, there's so many, um, you know, it's tough looking at them more so of my dad's, uh, just the stories that he has on some of his are, are pretty wild, uh, you know, stories that I'll, I'll probably never match, uh, with some of mine, but, um, and, uh, I have some of my grandfathers that aren't on that wall right now, but some half helmets, uh, with a face mask and goggles, like, uh, you know, they raced with no cages and, and uh, they weren't scared and, and they went and raced. So to me, uh, some of them helmets are, are pretty wild. And uh, I have some of my mom's uh, stepdad, Bob Hogle's helmets uh, that he won three CRA championships in. That's literally a, a rag helmet uh, that he raced with. Uh, it's just pretty mind blowing. Sheldon, uh, we all know your dad. Most of us know your uncle, okay? But now you're talking about your grandfather and your 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 mom's stepfather and all of that. How far back have you traced? I, I mean, and I don't know if you're one of those one of those ancestry guys, but this goes back. How far back can you trace someone in your family that raced cars? Uh, I'm not sure. Definitely just uh, both my grandfathers and, and both my uncles, obviously, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody asks about my dad and, you know, they all know about my uncle Ed and, uh, you know, my grandpa, John, their dad raced a little bit. And, uh, but the other thing with my mom's side is, uh, you know, her dad, Max, we knew raced at Ascot, uh, and then her brother, Mike raced at Ascot and ended up getting hurt. Uh, you know, and her dad ended up, uh, he raced with no cage at Ascot and ended up getting hurt in a midget, uh, you know, that ultimately ended up in his life. And then uh, his wife uh, remarried to Bob Hogle, who was uh, Max's best friend back in the day and three-time CRA champ. And uh, he's still kicking and, and crazy as ever. So uh, it's pretty crazy. When I go out west, we'll stop and visit uh, Bob. And he always has some good stories. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. We need to step away. The the Hot and Shelf family history will continue with that and a whole lot more. Stay with us. Hey Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a honey crisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out.
Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit here on MAP TV. On the Hercules Tire Hotline is Sheldon Hodgeshield, okay? Uh, one of the things I love about sitting and chatting with people is we never know where we're going on this. And I want to continue part of the conversation that we that we had in the first segment, okay? Sheldon, your dad, of course, Jack Hodgeshield, arguably the most beloved sprint car driver maybe ever, okay? Uh, just an amazing guy. You grew up with him. He was just dad, okay? Was there a point, was there a time, was there at some point in this thing where you realized that not only was he dad to you, but he meant so much to so many other people? Was What, what was that light coming on moment when you realized that your dad was the wild child? Man, I don't know. I think still every day I get that, uh, you know, different places I go and, and, uh, you know, just trying to win these races and going back to see how many races that he's won and things that he's accomplished, uh, you know, kind of puts it in perspective and, and how hard it really is, uh, to accomplish things like that. That you know, my dad, uh, pretty much thinks no big deal and, and doesn't even think twice about it and, and just carries on about his day and, and goes on. Mm. But how cool has that been for you to, to share that father, son and, and family bond of the racing world? I mean, and now you have this documentary for the love of dirt. I mean, it is just so interesting, cool, neat, just how everything has encapsulated itself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, a lot of people get to grow up uh, going racing with their dad and, and, you know, their dad's not racing with them. Their dad's taking them racing. And, and that's how I grew up, started racing dirt bikes. And, you know, dad was always taking me to the races or had somebody uh, looking after me when, when he was out racing. So, um, you know, to finally get to the stage where we could race together and, and um, you know, at, at a top level too with the outlaws and uh, something pretty surreal that, uh, you know, he probably thought of when I got started, but uh, I certainly never thought of it. So uh, definitely grateful for that. Sheldon Hodgeshield joining us, and we're going to continue with the history lesson because I am just fascinated. I am fascinated about the part of the country you live in there in Ohio. And we've talked about your dad and your uncles. You've talked about all of that. But you also grew up in a circle of friends and family that includes the Jacobs family, that includes Brad Doty. What's where do you think this all started in that area? What was it like? You know, what 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 were family picnics and going to the racetrack like with with Brad and Kenny and and Dean and everyone as far as all the racing world goes? Yeah, it's crazy. You know, we consider them all family. Yeah. They're like the Hot and Shield family, and and probably take us as the Jacobs family too. So, uh, just pretty crazy in this this part of uh, our two little counties here of Holmes and Wayne County, uh, you know, with, with the Jacobs, Dean, Cody, Lee, uh, Brad, and then uh, they have another uh, RJ Jacobs that's yeah. starting racing now. So uh, the list just keeps going of, of people racing. You know, I live five minutes from Doty and, and he's always texting uh, me or my dad and uh, just the racing around here. I was talking to Cody Jacobs, who also raced the uh, a little bit starting out and uh you know there was probably a time where me cody lee uh my buddy danny who grew up racing around me all raced at lakeville which is pretty crazy because you know that's somewhere that my dad ed kenny dean uh brad would have grew up racing incredible I, just a little hotbed right there in that little area you're in and, and to be surrounded with those people are incredible i want to kind of continue down the family path but in a different venture um with your girlfriend or fiance i should say um zan how is the wedding planning coming obviously uh that family side of, of things is is changing and growing as well yeah definitely i've been very fortunate uh, to meet zan and uh, i think we're on seven years now so uh, it's time for me to pull the trigger and, and, and start a new chapter. So uh, looking forward to it. The wedding planning has obviously been very tough uh, with all this going on. We were supposed to get married uh, on April 7th, which is my dad's birthday uh, in Tahoe. So uh, it's been devastating for, for both of us and uh, tough to plan anything uh, after just not knowing a schedule and, and what to do, really. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. That really is. Uh, take someone like a racer like Zan uh, to to understand that because quite honestly most I'm fairly confident most women wouldn't <laughs> although 
this COVID thing. And, and, and let's talk a little bit about this, Sheldon. Your whole life has been go, 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 go. I mean, you talked about it with your dad taking you to the track, then you started racing, you're a world of outlaws, you own your own team for a few years, go, go, go. How, I mean, and, and fortunately, you've talked about you have the shop there to keep you busy, but how different is it when you're not on the road all the time now? Yeah, definitely. It's crazy. Um, you know, uh, definitely not having an income is, has been tough. You know, I can only do so much at a shop, uh, uh, when I'm not making any money. So, uh, you know, obviously it's been good to be home and, and get things done with my own hands at home. But, uh, you know, the other half is not having any money to get anything done and, and really watching, uh, how I spend and, and stuff like that. You know, racers only make money when we're racing. So, uh, for us, it's pretty devastating and, and, um, you know, it definitely opens your eyes to, to be prepared a little bit more in the future. Um, you know, luckily I have great partners and, and uh, team owners and, uh, you know, I wasn't in a terrible position uh, going into this deal, but I could definitely see how people could be uh, in a rut and, and get in trouble. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is so well said. It really is. It's been a challenge for racers, been a challenge for everybody out there as we all work through this pandemic and, 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 try to develop some sense of normalcy. Sheldon, I am telling you, it's been a blast hanging out and chatting with you there in your race shop. Uh, one, of the, one of the neat things about it is used to be we did this on the phone and we'd never see all of the, see all of the neat things. So I appreciate you allowing us to come into your shop and, 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 and show us all the helmets in the background. And I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Yep, thank you guys. There we go. Sheldon Audenshield joining us here on the program. Stay with us. It's your turn to show us what's going on in your world on Tweet Your Seat. Tweets of the Week are coming up next. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. We're back, you're watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit, and it is your time of the week. It's time to tweet your seat. Now, as you know, last week, you know, NASCAR MRN kind of took our tweet your seat idea and turned it into their own with the NASCAR tailgate. But I, we're okay with it because it means there's racing and it's happening. And there were so many good tweets, y'all, from Tina, Tim, R Rihanna, Rick, Bill, Binoff, Jolene, TJ, Peter, DC, Cindy, Shalina, Shannon, Chuck, Mike, Bob, Jennifer, and Jessica. And all the food, Steve. I don't know about you, but all these food tweets are incredible. Oh, my gosh. My friend Tim up in New Jersey had pork roll-ups, okay? Uh, we had, uh, let's see, we had brats. We had ribs. We had crab legs. We had chips and dip. We had an Alaska salmon. Oh, my gosh, smoked wings and a lot of beer. Oh, we had a lot of beer and a whole lot of other things that, as you can see in these tweets, from people tailgating to camping to beach time, it was just a neat, neat time. Really neat to see that going on while we were down at Darlington. And Steve, I got to ask because I saw our uh, MRN cohort, uh, Dylan Welch, uh, Chili Bull extraordinaire racer. He tweeted that he had got pooped on by yeah. birds. And <laughs> I'm just curious. I mean, I've seen you with a bag on your head. What kind of craziness happens out there? You know, I, I other than other than my very own NASCAR tailgate, it was uh, it was I say it was normal. It was weird. Okay, yeah, um, it was a strange time. It was strange going down there, driving down alone to Darlington. Darlington's about two hours from my house here in Concord, and all week long we drove down and back. So you drive down and back, and and last Sunday was just weird because you're used to the camaraderie of you know whether you're in the hotel or getting up and going together and just driving. You got to the racetrack and NASCAR, I mean, you want to talk about every T crossed and every I dotted. They had it and they did it. Pulled right into gate 32 where I was supposed to go. Okay. Did the medical check. They took my temperature and made sure that I was clean and green and got in there right in, had the right parking pass. 
in up to my current location. And so it was so strange pre-race driving around there with nobody around. It was so strange pre-race not going in the garage and seeing all my butts, you know, because it's, it's such a community. I've said this before on this show. I go in the NASCAR garage and everybody wants to talk sprint car racing. The other thing I think it's one of the things that's really neat about this is just watching the progression here, okay? And we talked about this. The World of Outlaws did their first race, and Dave Reef, okay, he took the mic stand and set it six feet away from them. They set the bar. That's what we did in NASCAR. That's what we did in MRN. That's what, that's what Fox did. And so we're all kind of advancing and doing things. And we're what NASCAR's watching the world of outlaws and the world of outlaws are watching NASCAR and the NBA is watching NASCAR and everybody's watching everyone as we go through this crazy time. And uh, it was just fun. It was fun to, fun to be part of, neat to be part of, weird at times, normal at times, but uh, shoot, isn't that 2020? Weird at times, normal at times. That kind Absolutely. Of sums it all. And exactly. like you said, we've got to work together. So yes, it doesn't do. matter what sport it is, as long as we're working together to get back, that's all that matters. Yeah, and you want to talk about weird at times, okay? We have a Ford Performance tweet, okay? Weird at times, and the Tony Stewart is washing his Ford Raptor. That's not weird, but then he's given relationship advice, huh? Oh, hey, guys. Just, uh, as you can tell, I'm really bored, so... Uh... Cleaning the Raptor up. I'm sure everybody else is bored, but it's a good time to do a bunch of projects. And for all you married guys or guys that have girlfriends that want you to do all these honeydew projects, uh, it's a great time for you to do that and get that stuff done before we get back to work. So stay safe, get all your jobs done. Let's get ready to go back racing soon. Tony Stewart, how to have a relationship. Something I never thought I would see. Again, 2020 is strange. Hey, we need to step away. More Wing Nation in just a moment. There are people who say things aren't made here anymore. Those people should make a trip to Michigan, or Kentucky, or Illinois, where you'll find our workers, and dealers, and engineers, and technicians building for America. We're proud to employ more hourly workers than any other automaker in this country because we build for this country. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit here on Mav TV. I want to remind everyone Hercules Tires has their spring giveaway, their spring rebate, if you will. And for a purchase of four qualifying Hercules Tires, you can go to, uh, you can get a $70 Visa gift card from Hercules Tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash spring rebate. Love talking to Sheldon. Love talking about our tailgates and our tweet your seats. But Ashley... I'm a little brokenhearted, and I know you're a lot brokenhearted because this weekend was supposed to be the Weikert Memorial at Port Royal Speedway. Oh my gosh, we've had more fun at this race, and uh, we're just 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 can't can't quite make it happen this year, unfortunately. It's uh, it's extremely sad. Of course, I have the beauty of being able to go home and seeing the Speed Palace without it being Weikert Memorial weekend, so that's obviously not the same. But you know. Hopefully that just means next year will be bigger and better even yet because it didn't happen this year, right? I can't imagine bigger and better or wilder or more <laughs> all-consuming, if you will. Consuming being the key word, but it is great. And uh, it is just, it is just it's, it's, it's part of what we're dealing with and it's uh, not the first event canceled. Uh, sadly, I don't think it'll be the last either. So uh, we miss all of our friends in Pennsylvania. We miss all of our sprint car fans across the country as well, but we're glad you chose to spend some time with us. We appreciate Sheldon Hodenshield joining us here on Wing Nation, but more important, thank you for joining us here this week on the show.